we'll now have the invocation by Mr. Bren Romney. Let us pray. I will not ask that you stand again. You can just bow your heads where you, where you are. Oh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this lovely evening. We want to thank you for the ability to gather, to fellowship, and God to pay tribute to those who've means, who've meant, who mean so much to us for their contributions, their service, their sac the many sacrifices they've made over the course of their lives. We pray, Lord, that while we're here, that you'll join us and be, be in our midst. Bless us, your people. Bless the meal that we are about to partake of. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Chelsea Hughes. For those of you who may not know, I am the reigning Miss Anguilla 2015 to 2016. My co-host, Mr. Chris Richardson, should be joining me later during this ceremony. Without further ado, I would like to call on the Honorable Parliamentary Secretary, responsible for culture and the arts. He is a big family friend. He has been my big brother's mentor in his journey towards a very promising cricket career. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Mr. Cardigan Connor. Thank you, Chelsea, and good evening, everyone. Normally, when, when I start to speak, I ask for an exercise, and I think a number of people would have seen the exercise that I've done in the past where I get a standing ovation or I pull it out of people, but that's not what I'm going to use today. Another exercise I'll do is to ask you to look to the person to your left and then to your right and say, Happy Heroes and Heroines Day. Thank you very much for that. I know for most of us, uh, this is probably not something we would, we would normally say to family members and friends when this day comes around annually on December 19th. Uh, but if you allow me again, I, I would like to challenge you to continue to do that in the future. It is important that we as a community remember that the lifestyles and privileges that we enjoy today are possible because of the sacrifices and efforts of countless Anguillians that came before us and, and are sustained by the talents and the efforts of countless more in our communities that often go unnoticed and sadly at times without recognition that they deserve. It is therefore fitting that in renaming this national holiday, we choose to focus not on another milestone in our historical development, and we know that there are many of those, but rather on the men and women that made that milestone possible, our heroes and heroines. Our focus, however, is not limited to those of yesteryear, but on those that whose life work continue to exemplify the best of the Angolan experience seen through the lens of arts and culture. I would like to, at this time, address our awardees and simply say congratulations, and please accept tonight as an expression of gratitude to you from the nation you call home and from the people, your family and friends. Nothing we do here tonight can ever match your selfless sacrifice, talents and contributions to national development over the course of your life. So we say thank you, and we, write, and we write your name in the annals of Anguilla's history so countless will know of you and be inspired by your example. It is not for me uh, to discuss the contributions of these four distinguished exemplars of the arts and culture in Anguilla, so I would leave that to someone who is best suited to do that. 
But please join me in putting your hands together again in applause for, for them and for their families. <clears throat> to awardees, I want to welcome all four of you here tonight, and I hope that the experience exceeds your expectations. If you'll allow me for a few moments, I would like to also thank the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Social Development, Mrs. Chanel Petty Barrett, and the team that developed Anguilla's Culture Policy in 2013 for envisioning the need for this, cer for this ceremony, and the Department of Youth and Culture for making it a reality after many setbacks spanning over two years. Tonight's ceremony is dubbed National Arts and Culture Awards, or the Rock Awards. I, like, I quite like the Rock Awards. Named after the physical awards that was conceptualized, designed, and manufactured by our local sculptor, Chetty Richardson. The Rock Award essentially is a piece of Angolan limestone rock given to deserving recipients symbolizing the summit of achievements for their life's work. A full description is provided in the programs that you have before you. I must also acknowledge the fact that this is not the first ceremony to honor Anguillians for their contributions to the development and promotions of the art and culture in Anguilla. The Sunshine Theater, under the leadership of Felix Fleming, an awardee here tonight, has been doing this uh, for some time now, in fact, over a decade. And Native Sons Production and the Culture Yours program, under the leadership of Jerry Dice Richardson and Leroy Richardson, have been doing it for a number of years as well. On a national level, government, through Anguilla's Day Honors and Awards, also recognizes Anguillians for their contribution to arts and culture. However, the National Arts and Culture Awards process shines a spotlight on the work of many that might not be nominated for an Anguillian Day Award or whose work is deserving of national recognition. The selection process is a broader, more directed process that includes consultation with sector partners in the arts and culture. The criteria was developed by them and the selection process was spearheaded by an independent committee. More information on that process is forthcoming from the chair of the National Arts and Culture Awards Committee. I also want to thank you, the audience, for taking the time out on this busy holiday to join us in showing our appreciation to these outstanding Anguillians. Again, to the awardees, to our distinguished guests, family and friends of the awardees, fellow Anguillians, a hearty welcome. I leave the words of a British patriotic song, not British dependency, that I think embodies the commitment and service of our honorees. It says, I vow to thee, my country, all earthly things above entire and whole and perfect, the service of my love. The love that asks no question, the love that stands the test, that lays upon the altar the dearest and the best, the love that never falters, the love that pays the price, the love that makes undaunted the final sacrifice. I heard my country calling away across the sea, across the waves and waters she calls and calls to me. Thank you all for answering that call. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connor. The, the composition of the committee for 2015 is a very capable individuals. I would like you to acknowledge them by giving each person a round of applause as I call their name. Karima Carty. Angela singing Angie Ruan. 
Devon Carty. And the chairperson of the committee who will come forward and give a brief overview of the honorary process, Jacqueline Bryan Niles. Please come forward. everyone. You've just heard um, the names of the persons who the committee is comprised of, so I'll go straight into what our task involved. The committee was mandated to select three persons from the list of nominees to be awarded and was also advised that there were no restrictions as to how the categories should be selected. That is, all three awardees could very well be from the same category. It was noted, however, that there were some nominees who fell in more than one category. Now I'll tell you a bit about how the selection process was done. The first step was to review the award criteria as presented by the Department of Youth and Culture so that the members of the committee could get a proper understanding of the scope, context, and parameters of the selection guidelines and to make an informed decision and to select the best nominees for the awards. It would be worthy to note at this time that the Department of Youth and Culture advised the committee that no consideration was given to nominations of persons who previously received the National Anguilla Day Award for contributions made to Anguilla's development. Secondly, we briefly spoke of all the various categories in general as presented by the Department of Youth and Culture. The categories were divided into two main segments, namely arts and culture. Under the arts segment, there were categories such as music, dance, theater, culinary, visual, and literature. The culture segment looked at categories such as culture and development, culture preservation, and culture promotion. At this juncture, the committee immediately noted that there were no nominees listed for the music category in particular, and felt that this was one of the key categories in keeping with Anguilla's cultural history. Of course, the committee engaged in a lengthy discussion as it relates to music in Anguilla and identified about five possible nominees who could be considered for this award. Subsequently, the committee submitted a recommendation to the Department of Youth and Culture to consider giving a fourth award for the music category as well. And a nominee was also recommended. And I am happy to announce that our recommendations were accepted. The committee reviewed all of the biographies presented individually and after much discussion on each nominee based on the criteria presented the group went through a process of elimination by nominee. The category was also used as part of the elimination process in some instances where there was more than one nominee listed. In the culinary arts category, there was one nominee. In the cultural development, preservation, promotion, dance, and literature category, we had four nominees. Under the visual arts category, we had three nominees, and the theater arts category had two nominees. After an in-depth assessment of each nominee, the members unanimously agreed on the following four awardees for the National Arts and Cultural Awards. Under the category for cultural development, preservations, and promotion, 
Mr. John Benjamin was selected. In the visual arts category, Mrs. Irene Edwards was selected. In the theater arts category, Mr. Felix Fleming was selected. And in the music arts category, Mr. Keith Richardson, AKA Tasha Satoli was selected. In closing, firstly, the selection committee would like to congratulate the Department of Youth and Culture for taking the initiative to introduce such a historic annual event. Secondly, the members of the selection committee would like to thank the Department of Youth and Culture for affording us the opportunity to be involved in this historic event. And on behalf of the other members of the committee, I would like to say that it was a pleasure of each member to serve in this regard. I thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. On the table in front of you, there is a welcome packet. The packet is sponsored by Just Imagine and it includes homemade tea bag, five local recipe cards, and two coasters which are made from local grape leaves. Without further ado, we'll get into the prize giving. I'd like to call on Mr. Connor. Cardigan Connor once again to help me distribute the awards. The Rock Award in Musical Arts presented to Keith, Keith Tasha Sitoli Richardson. Now we will have a poetry reading by Farah by Farah Banks. The poem is entitled "Tis the Common Man" and it's written by Patricia Adams. Let's give Farah a round of applause. <laughs> 